This time on Bandit Patrol. Oh my goodness. There's a new cat in town. We've never rehabilitated a bobcat before, but the Allen family loves new challenges. And this kitty's got claws. <laughs> then. I'm gonna help you. A blind opossum takes on the fight of her life. I'm not giving up hope on her yet. Finally. Oh gosh, dag nabbit. Kristen and Grant play a game of wildlife shoots and ladders. Here we think that we're gonna put this bird up in the tree and then all heck breaks loose. Please be careful. It's the start of a new adventure for wildlife rehabilitators Kristen Allen and her son Grant. Today, they are picking up a baby bobcat, which was found orphaned by two other local rehabbers. Hey guys, how are you? So I get a call from another wildlife rehabilitator that says she has a bobcat, and they just don't have a facility for it. We've never rehabilitated a bobcat before, so we're super excited that we get this challenge put upon us. Baby bobcat. How little is he? I would say about seven or eight weeks. About okay. two pounds. A little over two pounds. All right. You want to see him? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Put your double gloves on. Mm -hmm. Those are Kevlar, I hope. Those are? Good. You'll need them. Even though he's little, I'm telling you, from the beginning, bobcats are vicious. Oh, my goodness. Isn't he beautiful? That cute little face is just like, as my mom used to say, cute don't cut it, because that personality is not cute. His instincts are there. He knows that he's a bobcat, and he knows what he's supposed to do. So we need to make sure that everyone stays safe, including the bobcat. Does anybody know what happened to the mom? No, it's pretty obvious that it had been without the mother for a while. He was pretty thin, dehydrated, covered in ticks. Mama's rough tongue just wipes those ticks off when they clean them, so that's how you know. This bobcat was totally emaciated, covered in ticks. He definitely would have died out in the wild. These rehabbers really saved his life. Here, we'll just kind of do a calm hand over here. He likes it when you cradle his back. He seems Aww. to be the calmest. Look how big those paws are. The ticks are still falling off of him from where we put the spray, but you can still see a tick in between his toes. There. Yeah. It's dried yeah. up and dead. He had hundreds. He looks really good, though. I promise you, I will take good care of this guy. Bobcats do not come in to rehabilitation very often because they're very elusive. Even out in the wild, people do not see them very often. And so rehabilitating a baby bobcat makes me a little nervous, but the Allen family loves new challenges. And we're up to the challenge of getting this bobcat ready to go out in the wild. Temperatures are soaring in Western Kentucky. Okay, we're here. Let's go get a bat. And wildlife rehabber Nikki Christian is at the local courthouse to help a bat beat the heat. Hello. Hey, are you the lady with the bat? I am. <laughs> all right, it's nice to meet you. My name's Nikki. I'm Darlene. Where's the bat at now? He is all cozy in this little crack. Oh you my gosh, he there? is. So was he just like crawling across the road? My boss noticed something hobbling, like a big, it looked like a big spider across the street. Yeah. And he come right on across the street and got in that little crack. He's been there ever since. Could you see him like actually moving all of his little limbs? He hobbled across the street. Yeah. But I, I don't think he can fly. OK, well, I'm going to try to get him out of there. It's not good for a bat to be on the ground like this, especially with this heat. He could literally cook out here. Something's definitely wrong with him. I know. You don't want to come out. I wouldn't want to come out either. Nice and cool down there. Hi, baby. Oh, Look at I know. I know. I'm so sorry. So sweet. I love bats. They're probably one of my favorite things. The mosquitoes that they kill alone. Oh, my gosh. Bats, they get a bad rap. It's a big misconception that all bats have rabies, and that's just not true. It's less than 1%. They're absolutely amazing animals. There's no reason to be afraid of them. He looks like he's moving everything, so nothing looks broken. All right, well, I'm going to get him in here and, um, and get him home and just see how he does. I don't know exactly what's going on with this bat. I want to really examine him well, make sure he's not dehydrated. There's no broken bones, no little tears in his wings, and kind of look him all over a little bit closer. 
All right, thank you again. Thank you. Meanwhile, back in Owensboro, the Allen family gets their first good look at the baby bobcat they will raise over the next several months. They got the majority of the ticks off of him. He's so small. He's a lot smaller than I thought he was going to be. Look, he's already getting the black tips on his ears. I'm going to guess that he is close to two months, at least. Yeah. See that tick right there? Yeah. There's another one. She said that they got hundreds of the ticks off. Hundreds of them, so. Trying to see his teeth. Yeah. His bite is already way stronger than a normal house cat. Oh, so. yeah. Be careful. Yeah. Look at those big, sharp teeth. When we deal with this bobcat, safety is going to be a big issue for us. He can bite through welding gloves right now, and he is a month and a half, two months old maybe. Just imagine whenever he is full grown, he is going to have such a strong bite force, so we're going to need to be very careful with it. Careful is right. As an adult, this bobcat will be able to take down prey up to nine times his own body weight. All right, we have to name him. OK, I had an hour and a half to think about this. And I know that you guys love it when I come up with names. No. I do. <laughs> <laughs> you have some good names. OK, you ready? Bobcat Marley. <laughs> so let's, let's just call it Marley, OK? Yeah. It's funny. I know. It's good. I like it. You're the only one that appreciates my humor. He's not injured at all, so we just need to fatten him up. That's the first step. Then we'll work on what he needs to do out in the wild. Adrian, you want to bring that food and water over here? Why don't you put it in his cage before we put him in there? Because he really does like taking a swipe at things. All right, you ready, buddy? Other rehabbers did a fabulous job of stabilizing him. Now we need to put some weight on this guy. Are you hungry, buddy? We're going to feed him raw meat with the bone in it, because that extra calcium is exactly what this baby needs. Who knows how long he's been without mom's milk, without mom hunting for him. So we want to make sure that anything he's been lacking, we make up for now. Being a licensed wildlife rehabilitator is not for the faint of heart. For Bridgette Williams, hurt animals are some of her most challenging rescues. But they are also her most rewarding. I am on my way to find an adult opossum that has some pretty severe injuries. The caller has informed me that she thinks one of the eyeballs have popped out of socket. So I'm sure this guy is going to be in really, really bad shape. All right, let's find this little opossum. Are you waiting for me? I, listen. Oh, you're very welcome. I'm Brigitte with Second Chances Wildlife Center. So what happened? He's been here. I went to work, and when I got yeah. back around 8, he was laying there. And was oh, laying. I see him. Oh, my goodness. When I first glanced at this opossum, my heart just dropped. When I see any animal suffering, I suffer a little bit inside as well. I hate to see any animal in pain, and I just want to help them. It's OK. It's OK. Poor thing. This opossum has a fractured eye. She has one eyeball literally hanging out of her socket. Seeing the severity of her eye damage, I'm sure there could be internal issues. You could tell that she is having trouble breathing with a little snores. It's OK, baby. It's OK. The tongue is very swollen and bloody, too. It's OK, baby. It's OK. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. I appreciate you calling. Yeah. I mean, he's just sitting there. Why, sure. why wouldn't you want to hurt to say Yes, that? exactly. Yeah. If it weren't for Katie, the lady that found the opossum and called me, this opossum would have just been left in this parking lot to slowly die. Katie said she felt an automatic connection to this opossum because her mother used to be a wildlife rehabilitator and unfortunately passed away five years to this day. So she felt like her mother had somehow brought her to this opossum. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. It. Call anytime, check on him. I'll be yes, happy to give you an update. Yep, thanks. Time is very critical right now. This opossum's injuries look so severe. 
I can't waste two hours going to the center and then take her to the vet. She needs to go ASAP. Not wanting her injured opossum to suffer more than it has to, Bridgette Williams beelines for the vet's office. Thanks for seeing her so quickly. Both eyes are damaged. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It was a no-brainer that when I first looked at this opossum, I knew she would never regain her sight. I can work with the fact that she'll be blind. My biggest concern at this point is just to see how severe her internal injuries may or may not be. And if they're so bad, the only option, unfortunately, is just to help put her out of her suffering. She seems to have a good grip with all four feet. Mm -hmm. Her tail's good. I can feel a soft spot, but she seems to be alert and aware and moving. We want to get x-rays and mm -hmm. see the extent mm -hmm. of the damage everywhere. And we didn't see anything that really indicated that she needed to be euthanized immediately, but one of her eyeballs was basically hanging out of its socket. The other one had been completely destroyed. So we'll need to kind of assess the severity of the fractures to her skull and potentially brain injury. We got fractures front, mm -hmm. front. This line right here mm -hmm. should be continuous with this. Okay. Just like this one is. Mm -hmm. She probably got run over right across the top of her nose. Getting hit by a car like this opossum did is really awful. Most of the time, it's by accident when humans hit animals, but she's barely hanging on to life, and that makes me very sad. What we don't know is how much the cranium moved, and that it really is what determines the damage to the mm -hmm. brain. Sure. The compression fractures to her skull could have caused really severe injury to certain parts of her brain. That injury can continue to get worse. So even though she came in functional and able to walk and grasp, uh, those injuries may progress to a point where she becomes unconscious or comatose. What she's going to be capable of recovering from is going to be a matter of time, if she can survive. You can give her a chance if you want. Yeah, let's give her a little bit of time. Let her tell us which way she wants to choose. Yeah, I mean, she's going to declare. Mm -hmm. She's going to yep. With the years of experience I have had with wildlife, I know that they will let me know if they're willing to put up the fight for the long haul. Dr. Jewell is going to treat her eyes today. I'm going to take her back to the center and really pay attention to what she is telling me. But I'm not ready to give up hope yet. Four weeks older and double his original weight, Bobcat Marley is now healthy enough for a quick but important step in his rehabilitation. Hey, Grant, you want to come help me for a minute? Yeah. I'm going to give him his feline distemper vaccine. OK, you draw it up before we get to him. With any animal, you're always concerned about imprinting. And with a bobcat, we definitely don't want him to approach anyone in the wild. So we're going to be as hands off as we can possibly be. But we have to vaccinate him. So the goal when we vaccinate Bobcat Marley is to do it as quickly and painlessly as possible. Let's just get him out and get him a shot and get him back in. You ready? I'm ready. Hey there, buddy. That's a good one. No, good thing I have two gloves on, right? Mm -hmm. Alright, get him close. Okay, let me get him positioned better. something that we have to touch him, then we will touch him. But basically, this is a hands-off raising of this animal. If we do our job correctly as rehabbers, this bobcat is not going to want anything to do with us, and that's exactly what we want. Dang, I'm sorry, buddy. He says, I don't like you. I know. And that's just as it should be. Now Bobcat Marley just needs to grow a little bit more, and then he gets to go to his big outdoor enclosure. That big outdoor enclosure is going to make him bigger, stronger, and wilder. A few towns away from Kristen, 
Let's see what's going on with this little guy. Nikki tries to figure out why her newly rescued bat was in that crack by the courthouse in the first place. A courthouse bat. We'll call him Bailiff. Bailiff the bat. Considering how hot it has been, I figured that he was dehydrated. But he doesn't look bad at all. His eyes are not sunken in at all. And actually, the inside of his mouth looks good and pink. You know, looking at this bat now, I'm kind of thinking that I might have had this all wrong. Maybe something happened to the mom. Maybe he just got orphaned, just got lost. I think Bailiff is just a young bat and just is not ready to fly yet. He was stuck out in the heat, and he was trying to find any place cool, and that crack was the first place that he found. You ready to eat a little bit? The fact that he might be orphaned, you know, for a few days, then he's probably hungry. Okay. Let me squish the guts out. Maybe you'll like that. This bat is not interested in this millworm, so I'm going to tear it in half and kind of get those juices flowing and see if they'll kind of kick in that instinct. Right. There. Good job. Yummy, yummy. I'll give you another one. Hang on. Oh, my goodness. So, oh, yeah, now you know what I've got. Holy moly. <laughs> he is chowing down. He's liking this. To see Bailiff right now taking these millworms, it's a good thing. But he is not out of the woods because they can look fine one minute and not be OK the next. I'm going to keep a close eye on him to make sure he's eating good, make sure that everything's working the way it's supposed to be working. And then the next step is just getting him ready to fly. You are so cute. Bobcat Marley is tucked away at the Allen House, so Kristen and Grant take a two-hour trek to answer a raptor emergency call. Hey there, how are you? Good, how about you? I'm Kristen. Sharina. Grant. Nice to meet you okay. guys. Okay, so you have a baby? I do, I do. <laughs> uh, yesterday, on the way home from school, uh, we drove in and found this little guy <laughs> on the ground <laughs> next to the tree. How long has he been out of the nest? Yesterday, we came home at 3.15, so I'm okay. not sure, okay. you know, okay. before that, how long yeah. he's been out. Let me pick him up and we'll check him out. Just make sure you okay. don't get hurt falling out of the nest. Oh, you're adorable. <laughs> he looks good. He doesn't look like he has any head trauma. Good. His legs feel good. Everything feels normal to me. He's like, I'm just still a baby. Thankfully, he does have some of his primary feathers. So he didn't just like plummet to the ground and go plop. He actually kind of fell with style. He's not injured, so all we have to do is get him back in the nest. Do you think there's any more in the nest? We noticed mom, she was up feeding. Oh, OK. Uh, in okay. the nest, and we could see one more little okay. one up there. OK, so you want to show me where sure. the nest is? Sure. So it's this tree here, oh, uh, and if you look up, Holy guacamole. You'll see the, the nest. OK. See right there? Oh. And so it is a, a good way. As I look up into the tree, and it's 40 feet up, this nest is, yeah. I'm thinking to myself, unless my son Grant can learn how to fly, there's no way he's getting this bird back up in that tree. Mm. About 40 feet stand between this baby red-tailed hawk and his nest. Kristen and Grant face a real head scratcher. OK. Well, what are you thinking? I'm looking to see if there are any branches that I could climb up on. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, there's no way I can climb up. Yeah. OK, let's. Do you have a local fire department? We do. That's what we're going to have to do. If we want to get him back in the nest, I think the only chance is us getting the fire department to get involved. I know, and every other rehabber knows, that the best place for these animals to be are with their parents. And this mom's still around. If I have to call the fire department to get this bird back up in the nest, that's what I'm going to do. I'll call the fire department. 
Hey there, my name is Kristen Allen, and this is probably the craziest call that you're gonna get like today or this month. But um, I'm a wildlife rehabilitator, and I actually came from Owensboro because a baby hawk fell out of a nest, and it's probably 40 feet up, the nest is. So desperately, I'm calling you to see if there's any way the volunteer fire department would bring a truck out here and help us get this baby back up in the nest. All right, thank you so much. All right, bye-bye. He's gonna do it. So as soon as he gets off work, he's gonna be here. I will send you a text That'd be great. and let you know when he's back in the nest. Perfect. All that right, so good. thank you so thank much. You so much. I appreciate it. This is our last resort. Is the fire department gonna be able to help us do it? That's the question. Almost two days after being hit by a car, Bridget's blind opossum is still in critical condition. I'm just watching her breathe a little bit. It's always good to take time just to observe the animals because you can learn a whole lot just by simple observation. There's several things that I'm looking for with this opossum. Is she moving around a little bit? Is she able to eat some soft foods? It's gonna let me know if I'm able to continue down the road of her recovery, or if it ends here and we will just have to peacefully let her go on her own. Hi, baby. First, I'm gonna give her some pain meds. She cannot be very comfortable at the moment. I'm sure this will make her feel a lot better. All right, there's pain medicine. Now for the antibiotics, which have to be given to her very slowly. She's a very patient patient, for sure. Right now, I don't see any signs of brain damage. However, it would make me feel more confident in her recover if she would show me a few more signs that she's improving. I'm going to give her just a little bit of water. There, baby. Since she's primarily breathing through her mouth, it gets really dry. It's just like if you and I have a cold and we're breathing through our mouth, we're probably going to get a dry mouth as well. She's trying to drink it. That's a good sign. She might actually be swallowing it, which would thrill me. I think she did just swallow that. Yay! Yesterday, when I was putting a little bit of liquid in her mouth, she would just shake it out. I think her throat was still too swollen to swallow anything. And now it looks like she's swallowing it. So this is very exciting. I always have a tendency to root for the underdog. This opossum definitely is an underdog, but Katie and her mother's story was very special, and I really just want this opossum to survive. All right, little one, that's it for today. Renesting a red-tailed hawk is not usually part of a fireman's job description. But today, the Grand Lakes Fire Department will try to use their skills to help Kristen and Grant do just that. All right, you guys ready? I'm Kristen. Kristen Ross. Charles Wood. Nice to meet you. This is my son, Grant. Hi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> All right, so this is the baby that came out of the nest. Let me show you where it is. Okay. I'm like, it, it's, it's way up there. See, right? That second thick branch there? Yeah. How tall is your ladder? It's 35 foot. How tall do you think that is? It's going to be close. Are you going to take the bird up? I, yeah, I, if that works for you. Yeah. Well, we can give it a shot and see. OK. This is the moment of truth. Is the fire department going to be able to get Grant up there to get this hawk in the nest? As far as you're going to go. We haven't seen the mother hawk, and we really don't want to tangle with a mom. I know how like I am with my children. Nobody better mess with them. And I certainly don't want Grant having to mess with his mama hawk. All right, here you go, bud. You're going in. Next place is the nest. Before you climb on a branch, make sure the branch is secure. OK. Don't fall. OK, I won't. Seriously, Grant, be careful. There's two more in the nest. Okay. Whoop, that's a fledgling. 
Oh gosh, dag nabbit. There goes but another fledgling. So as Grant is putting the baby hawk up in the nest, all of a sudden, these two other hawks start jumping out of the nest. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, can this get any worse? <laughs> Red-tailed hawks are literally falling out of the sky in Grand Rivers, Kentucky. Here we think that we're going to put this bird up in the tree, everything's going to be wonderful, and then all heck breaks loose. One jumps out, and it's in the next tree, and then the other one glides down, he gets in the lake, and I'm like, oh my gosh, what is going on here? This was supposed to be simple once the ladder got here. We really need to grab that other one. Yeah, so I'm going to have to climb that tree to grab that one. OK. You know, the bottom line is that the nest is best for these birds. That's where they need to be. Worst case scenario, if I have to take them home because they keep jumping out of the nest, I will. But that's going to be my last option. Please be careful. You're OK, buddy. Watch so that branch doesn't break. As Grant is up in the tree, I can imagine how that mother hawk feels. Because those baby hawks are branching out on those branches, and my son is up on one of those branches right now. Let me come up and grab him. Just, just so you don't. Here. Uh, here you go. There's a bird in there. <laughs> Ready yet. Give me one second here. Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, oh. Don't fall. Mom. Sorry. Mom. I love you. Just stay in there. You're okay, buddy. Watch out. They might grab you. That's all right. Got him. Grant's an adult, but you worry about your children. You know, like the mother hawk wants to take care of her baby hawks. I want to take care of my son, too. Will you guys hold one more time sure. for us? OK. So we came down here to re-nest one bird. And actually, we're going to end up re-nesting three. But if they keep jumping out of the nest, I'm going to have no choice but to take them with me. Don't jump. It's OK. I'm putting your brothers back up here, OK? Okay, don't do it. If he's on a close branch, just leave him. No, he's still on it. We're good. OK. Here you go. No, 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 no. Stop. There you go. Don't push your brother off. It's OK. You know, it was a little chaotic. Birds jumping out of the nest, having to call the fire department. But all in all, it worked out perfectly because these babies are back safe where they need to be with their mama. After three weeks under Nikki's watchful eye, Bailiff the Bat should be able to start flying. Day is a big day. With animals in general, there's a lot of things I could teach them. Flying is not one of them. Bailiff is an orphan, so he's going to have to learn how to fly on his own. Oh, no, there, I know. I'm taking a nap, but it's time to wake up. He has got to fly to survive, so I've got to make sure that he knows how to fly before I can release him. You're OK. There you go. Oh, OK. <laughs> He took off within just a few seconds of me opening my hand, but he turned around and went right back into his enclosure. <laughs> of course he did. I know it's a big, scary world, but you got to come on out. Come on, get hurt again. Even though he feels safe in there, he's got to come back out. We've got to do this again. I need to see more flight out of him. Come on. Spread the wings, baby doll. There you go. It was a short flight, but you flew. Oh, no, love. You can't get up there. Man. 
he can fly. This is a good sign, but you know what? I want to see how long he can stay in flight. And right now, he's just wanting to climb. Nope, I'm not going to let you climb any higher. I want you to fly, and then I can release you. Come on. You're all right. Come on. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. When Bailiff took offline, it was one of the prettiest things I have ever seen in my entire life. Yes, a bat is pretty. You are doing so good, Bailiff. I'm super excited. I have seen Bailiff eating, and now I've seen him flying. All his muscles are good and strong. There is nothing stopping me from releasing him back into the wild. Who is the biggest, baddest bat around? Say, Bailiff. Now weighing in at over 10 pounds, Bobcat Marley has outgrown his indoor cage and is ready to start using his claws. You ready to go for the outdoor enclosure, Marley? You just wait till you see how big it is outside. It's going to be much bigger and nicer for you out there. This one's double gloved, so hopefully he doesn't go through it, but I'm guessing he very well still could. I need to move very slowly to grab Bobcat Marley because he is very defensive and very aggressive. So I need to do this very carefully without injuring myself or injuring the Bobcat. Ready, Marley? Yeah. I think that's enough. You're OK. Want to throw a blanket over him? Uh, I should be able to, you're okay. Hey, calm down. Calm down. It's okay. It's okay. You're okay. It's okay. You're doing good, Grant. was a real little dickens. He put up quite a fight. And I was just so happy when Grant finally got him in that little transport cage. OK, well, it's going to be the last time you have to get him out of there. So I know, that's a positive right? thing. That should be the last time that we make contact with him. Yeah. All right, ready? <laughs> yeah. Marley's at the age now that he would start going with his mother and hunting outside the den. So with Marley being in this huge outdoor enclosure, he's going to be able to hunt and practice all those natural instincts that he was born with. Bobcat Marley's new outdoor home has everything a growing Bobcat needs to hone his survival skills. You ready, buddy? <laughs> Hiss means yes. <laughs> is that what it means? Bobcat Marley's enclosure is incredible. Because we've never rehabilitated a bobcat before, we did a lot of research. There are rocks to climb on. There's a den to sleep in. There's a pond. And much like a zoo, we installed a little guillotine door so that he could be on one side, we can clean the other side. We put him. You want to go in this side? Getting Marley into the big cage, we had to think about this. So what we're going to do is put that transport cage up to the guillotine door. He's going to climb into one side. So we'll be safe on one side. He'll be safe on the other. He's already going. He's smelling. He's like, this is all new stuff, and I'm excited. Here we go. You ready, buddy? All right, so just give him a minute. Come on. You can do it. Come on, Marley. There he goes. So he went straight into the green reed. Yeah. Bobcat Marley being comfortable in this enclosure is really important. Let's get out while he's up in that corner. Yeah. Bobcats have a tendency to hide, but Marley didn't hide for long. And I'll take that as a compliment for our handiwork. I really thought he would run and hide first thing. I did, too. He's really happy to be out in the bigger space. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
scientists think he's going to get at least twice the size that he actually is now. Bobcat Marley could grow to be upwards of 30 pounds and strong enough to jump as high as 12 feet in the air. Now that Bobcat Marley is in the outdoor enclosure, there will only be live prey given to him. He's going to have to hunt for his food. I'm going to start him out on small mice, and then we're going to get bigger from there. Let's see what he does. Ooh. He says, that didn't take me long, did it? Is he eating it? I can tell by the way Bobcat Marley is hunting that he's going to be able to do great out in the wild. But he's got to grow a lot bigger so that he can defend himself against other wild animals. As Bobcat Marley grows, we're going to have to start thinking about how we're going to release this boy. Because we're going to have to transport him safely so that we don't get hurt and he doesn't get hurt. In Louisville, Kentucky, Brigitte's blind opossum shows small signs of improvement. Hi, baby. But there's still one major hurdle. I can care for any blind animal. What I need her to do on her own is eat. I brought you some good stuff. I'm hoping that this yummy flavor yogurt will entice her to eat on her own. Oh, she's smelling it. There you go. Yeah, that's the good stuff. This is the first time she's just eaten anything. She's hungry. Yay! She's able to sit up. I'm excited to see that. Not only is she eating, but she's able to move her jaw. This is something I wasn't sure she was going to be able to do. I think you've licked it clean. Oh, one more drop, she said. <laughs> I am so excited at the progress that this opossum is making. I had a lot of doubts, but she showed me that she was a fighter, and she showed me that I should fight along with her. It's amazing recovery, just amazing. Court is finally in session for Bailiff the Bat, and this bailiff is ready to be set free. This is where Bailiff was saved. So, like, are we going to release him here? I'd like to try to find some wood somewhere. There's some trees over there. Yeah. It's close, so he'll still know the area, but it won't be right here where all this just, it's just nothing but concrete. Let's do it near the trees. It's important for me to release Bailiff back where he came from, because bats live in colonies, and this is where his colony is, and he needs to be with his family. All right, then, Bill. Come on. You ready? It's your time to fly. Come on. You can do it. Did he go? He flew that way and I flying back around this way. Did he say he's right there? There he goes. He Woo! went that way, towards the trees. Did he? Yeah. You got better eyes than I did. It's so cool. I cannot believe I missed him flying off. It was kind of like he was in my hand one second, and then he was gone. But you know what? He disappeared into the night just like he should. Good job. Woo! Bye, Bayla, wherever you are. Now six months old, Bobcat Marley is ready to fully embrace his wild nature. Ready, Marley? I brought dinner. But before Kristen and Grant can release him, they have to catch him. Good. Let me get out of here first. Hello. This is going to be tricky. Bobcats are nocturnal, so Marley's curled up in his little den fast asleep, but we need to get him into his transport cage without putting our hands on him. I put some mice into the transport cage to try and lure him out of that den, but if that doesn't work, we're going to have to try and figure out some other way to get him in there. Do the happy dance. Oh, yeah. OK. You're OK, Marley. I'm sorry, Marley. We are taking you to the most awesome place, though. I know. I know. I'm sorry. 
Thank goodness we got him in there. Nobody touched him and nobody got hurt. Watch your hand, Mom. I am. He's pretty stressed out since we had a trapper to get him to his release location. Marley is by far the most aggressive animal I've dealt with. And to get such a top predator out in the wild, it's absolutely amazing. Kentucky may be known for their wildcats, but bobcats are hunted here. So Kristen finds the ideal place to release Marley. He's mad. Hey, Marley. That was a long ride, wasn't it? This place that we picked for Marley could not be more perfect. There's tons of acreage, it's private land, and best of all, no hunting. You ready, Marley? There's lots of rabbits out here and quail. You know it, OK? On three. One, two. It's a big world out there, and it's all yours. Oh, there he goes. Don't go in there. Don't you dare! It's like it's a cave, Mom. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? Out of all the open land here, Marley goes straight for the abandoned shed. Well, if that's where he wants to make his home tonight, then that's where he wants to make his home. In there? In here. And you know what? I bet there are mice in there, too. He just wanted shelter for the night. Exactly. <laughs> all right, let's go. <laughs> It's not the dream release that I imagined, but I'm not worried because he's got a lifetime to explore these woods. I was really hoping he'd show us how fast he could run, though. Yeah, well, we'll have to wait for the next one. Next one, that's right. Marley is going to thrive out here. He's not going to approach humans. Look what he did. The first thing he did was find the safest place to get away from the Allen family. Oh, Marley, Marley, Marley. It's been three months since the blind opossum first came into Bridgette's care, and her recovery has been nothing short of miraculous. Today, the opossum's rescuer, Katie, is here to see her for herself. Hey, Katie. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm so glad you could make it. I can't wait to see her. I'm so excited. Oh, my God. Can you believe? She looks so great. She does. Hi, baby girl. Look, I had some treats for you. She recognizes my voice. She's so alert. She's ravenous. <laughs> These are good treats. We were worried that her jaw is slightly out of line. Uh, but I think that has worked its way out to where she can eat pretty well. She is brilliant. I absolutely love her. And she looks so happy. Because of your call. If you didn't call, she wouldn't be here. <laughs> My mom always taught me just to help anything that you can help, you know? Katie and her mother's story was very special to me and my team. So I feel that an appropriate name for this opossum is a wonderful way to pay tribute to Katie and her mother. So she has the name. And I think you will appreciate this name. We named her Angel. And that was partially because of your mom that used to rehab and the whole story of how you thought that she brought you to this opossum and uh, <laughs> in her memory of the day of her passing. So her name is Angel. Thank you. Yes, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. I think that Angel's story will definitely inspire people. She came in in such severe condition that euthanizing her was definitely an option, but Angel did not give up, and I did not give up on Angel. She's gonna have a great life here at Second Chances. She's my little miracle. 